not necessarily reflect the opinions of the regional <laughs> and the national Brazil leadership. In fact, I can pretty well tell you they, they don't match. Not, <laughs> but here's the questions that I'd like us to kind of just brainstorm for a minute and, and think about among ourselves. And if you want me to give opinions, I, I can do that too. But let's just start with the question. The first one, very simply, which is the question that I think uh, Brother Ray actually just asked. Does the Garcia movement apply the church teaching on ecumenism? I guess you didn't ask exactly that question, but... So that would be my first question, is does the Garcia movement, in the way that we know it, does it do that? No. Well, let's have hands. I have a no here. I have a strong no. no. Do you want to expand on that, or just no? Only because our FCC Garcia only go to the Catholic people only. We don't evangelize outside Catholic faith. And versus the English Garcia, might have been influenced by the English Garcia too much. Um, they evangelize non-Catholic, and then later on you will find them being Catholic. So it's like, wow, they, 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 they go to the Garcia movement, and then suddenly they change into they go to the program of RCIA, they become Catholic. So you want to be unity, then we have to be embracing everybody, all of our Christian brothers and sisters. Not just the Catholic, sorry, but that's not my opinion. Okay, somebody else, <laughs> uh, Sister Annie had a question, and then next, back. I think there definitely is, I think in the Crucial Manual, there's actually some kind of a qualification to join the Crucial, and one of them is to be Catholic. Baptized Catholic. Yes. Yes, the National Corsio policy. The National Corsio policy says right. that. Yeah. And so that it's that's the Corsio movement you're talking about, but it has. It's, we're not doing it now. Okay. Any? Uh, wait a minute. There was a question back there first. Go ahead. No, uh, you were first, weren't you? I think. No, and then uh, Brother Vic. After that. No, because I disagree with her when she said no. Because you know, the Corsio movement is not just teaching on the you know, on the unity outside, but our lives, they're teaching us to really be holy and all that, and we go to our worker, co-workers that are you know, diver diversified in, in, in religion, and we are the sole example, and you know, to tell you the truth, I have a lot of you know, co-workers that because of our example, they are really growing to, you know, uh, what, what, you, what you, your examples are. I just want to kind of get some questions and then I'll kind of uh, say what, summarize a little bit, but yes. Well, talking about the Brazilian uh, movement, it's not only for the Catholic, it's also for the Protestant. If we check the internet, there's a Lutheran routine in there. There's a Baptist routine as well. That's why it's all over. There are some, and I, actually this is why I wish the regional people were here, because I don't know what the status of those movements is with the uh, national, but, but you're right, they, they do exist in, and within those movements. And that is another way, is can Corsillo be exported, not just inviting other people on our weekends, but can they be exported? So thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts before I conclude? Because now I am getting out of time, right? Yeah, 10 minutes over. Okay, well, let me, let me just... Uh, Actually, we have the one other question here, too. Now, let me ask another question first, and then I'll kind of summarize. Which is, I think we kind of already answered it. Let, let's do this. I'll, I'll kind of summarize and give what I think here. And then if anybody wants to add to that, if we can take a couple minutes to do that, and then we'll have to end and move to the uh, next presentation. But how should the Corsillo movement apply church, church teachings on ecumenism? Let me just echo some of what I think I already heard here. Um, one is that we, we are and we should by bringing what we learn in Corsillo into our environments, to leaven the environment in other words. So even though we may not bring someone to a Corsillo weekend, we can do that ecumenical work outside by bringing what we learn in Corsillo and our own change of heart to actually bring that to other people and bring it to the church. That's one. Uh, Brother uh, Vic also mentioned the idea of other Corsillo movements, in other words, other, I shouldn't say, other uh, Corsillo groups 
that are based on certain faith traditions. And I know there are many of those, but I actually believe that a number of them are, are not necessarily affiliated and that the national has, has not necessarily recognized those, but I don't know that for sure. So I probably shouldn't, uh, I, I won't say it for sure, but I, I think it's something that, uh, you know, we might want to look at it and as a movement, my question would be, why aren't we exporting Corsillo to other Christian groups that would like to have Corsillos? That, that would be one possibility. And of course, why aren't we also taking what we learn and bringing it more out to the other, other people in our workplace and our environment? And I have an answer to that one because I think there is a problem with that also. And here's the problem. If I go to my workplace and I have another, and I do have a couple people there who are other Christian denominations, and I start sharing with them, well, I've been evangelized through Corsillo. Isn't it my tendency to want to bring that person to the Corsillo? Yeah. But I can't. I can't, actually. I'll send them to the English Corsillo is what I'll do. But, <laughs> but, but I can't. And I'm not necessarily suggesting that as an FCC group, we should necessarily do that. I think there are, are reasons why our FCC is evolved as a Catholic only uh, a Catholic only group, and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong fundamentally with having a an, an Catholic only group. But I believe the the gift of Corsio is such that it really should spread. I mean, I think it, I think somebody's going to answer questions for why Corsio isn't bigger than it is in in other non-Catholic Christian groups. And so that would be my particular opinion. That's why I, I voiced this question, is how should Corsillo, as a larger movement, not just us, grow to uh, maybe evangelize even even better, even outside of our Catholic Church? Yes, Brother Ray. I think, in regards to the matter, Deacon, I think, based on my observation in my parish church, when they talk about the RCIA in a subtle way that takes care of connecting to the non-Catholics. And then when they get, uh, when they become Catholics, I guess that would be the right time for us to get closer to them and invite them to be Corsellians. That's certainly one possibility, but I think it can also work the other way. Let me give you give you just a little bit about the English Corsillo. Let me give you two English Corsillo groups that are very successful in having ecumenical Corsillo weekends. One is the Diocese of Oakland, which we're pretty familiar with. And the other one is actually my home diocese, um, that I didn't know this until recently, the Diocese of Peoria, Illinois. They have had fabulous success and they made a, even a great video that I think I sent it around to the community a while back about their ecumenical weekends. And they have lots of people coming into the Catholic Church. Why? Because they make a Corsillo weekend. They see an ideal Catholic Christian community and they want to become part of it. And, I mean, RCIA is wonderful, but it can't give what Corsillo gives. And so I think that's... I, I, I think that's, you know, that's my personal uh, opinion. And so that's one of the possibilities that I think uh, is out there and perhaps should be considered, uh, um, you know, by people in leadership or whoever has to consider it. And ultimately, let me give you just one other thing, too. One of the things that the document on ecumen ecumenism says, it talks a lot about uh, celebrations that are ecumenical where you actually bring people in. And it really recommends that we don't create new ones. In other words, we shouldn't have uh, a celebration that is a mixture of Catholic and Protestant, but it is up to the bishop to determine what we do in terms of bringing people into, the, into Eucharistics and other kinds of liturgical celebrations. So it is kind of the bishop's decision if he wants an ecumenical uh, corsillo in his in his area, according to this document, not according to the national or regional documents. Anyway, I talked way too long. Sorry, Mr. Dennis. Okay. Better, and I think that's I think that's my last slide. Well, questions, but we already handled the questions. So. <laughs>